Hello. Today we're discussing Parsha Ve'et Hanan, and I pleaded. The brief summary. Moshe recounts how he pleaded with God and was asking to allow him to enter the land of Israel. God refused this request and instructed Moshe to climb the mountain and to see the land of Israel from the top of the mountain, to the east, west, north, and south. Uh, Moshe implores the Israelites to treasure the Torah, praising its wisdom, its righteousness, and its justice. We will come to that in a few minutes. He then focuses on the divine revelation, reminding that the God did not appear to us in any image or form. He was talking about the all-encompassing presence of Hashem, that He is not only the one God, but the one and only reality for this world. Even when exiled, God will not forsake His people. That's what the Parsha says. And eventually they will repent and will return back to Hashem. Moses designates three cities of refuge on the eastern side of the Jordan River. These sites provide a refuge for an individual who, by accident or deliberately, murdered somebody. And they protect this person. And Moshe repeats the Ten Commandments reminding the Israelites that the Sinai Covenant was not limited to those who were present in there physically, but to all future generations. Then Moshe describes the fright which gripped the whole Jewish nation when uh, Hashem has revealed the Ten Commandments to them at Mount Sinai uh, uh, from the fire. And the leaders of the tribes approached Moshe and pleaded that he uh, asks Hashem for the rest of the Ten Commandments after the first two were, the, were announced by Hashem and transmit the words of God to all the Jewish people. And God actually agreed. God actually said that this is a wise decision. Then God tells Moshe to order everybody back to their tents which basically it means back to normal life. The next part of the Parsha begins with the first section of the Shema, the most important prayer of Jewish people. This paragraph contains the fundamentals of Judaism, mitzvot of belief in God, unity, love of God, meaning and the purpose of tefillin, mezuzah, and Torah study. This is the prayer which was on the lips of every Jew who was killed because he is a Jew right through the centuries of Jewish history. These were the last words uttered by Jewish people on the way to their guest chambers during the Holocaust. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Had. The Israelites are directed to destroy the inhabitants of Canaan along with their idols and prohibition of intermarriage uh, is announced and is discussed very seriously. And that is the content of that Parsha, Beit Hanan. I would like to concentrate on the reason uh, why Moshe is talking about Torah and Torah commandments. In order to understand this, I would like to use the, as a foundation of what I'm going to say in the next few minutes, writings of Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. He summarized this idea absolutely brilliantly in his articles. He says the following, Simon Sinek, the motivational speaker and marketing consultant in very much so watched on um, YouTube, the TED talk, asked the question, how do the great leaders inspire action? What made people like Martin Luther King and Steve Jobs stand out from their contemporaries who may have been as well qualified and uh, very gifted motivational speakers as well? 
And his answer is, most people talk about what? Some people talk about how. But the great leaders start with the question, why? This is what makes the transformative or change managers to become real leaders. See, next lecture was about business and political leadership. But the most powerful examples through, through history are directly or indirectly religious. Let's have a look together. Abrahamic monotheism, different, is that it believes there is an answer to the question, why? Neither the universe nor human life is meaningless or is an accident or a happenstance. Freud, Einstein and Wittgenstein all said something along those lines. Religious faith is a faith in the meaningfulness of life. In other words, to believe in God is to believe that life has a meaning. Rarely is this shown in a more powerful light than in this parsha, Beit Hanan. There is a lot in Judaism and in Torah about what. What is permitted, what is not permitted, what is forbidden, what is sacred and what is uh, secular, uh, what is allowed and what is not allowed. Then there is a lot in Judaism about how, how to learn, how to pray, how to grow in our relationship with God and with the other people. There is relatively little about why. In Vayat Hanan, Moshe says some of the most inspiring words ever uttered about the why of Jewish existence. This is what made him the great transformational leader he was. And it has consequences for us here and now. To have a sense of how strange Moses' words were at the time, we must recall what was the actual situation. The Israelites, the Israelites were in the desert, in the middle of nowhere. They had not yet entered the land of Israel. They had no military advantage. They were on the bank of Jordan River, yes, but they had no military advantages over the nations that, would, that they would have to fight in the promised land. Now, we know that 10 of the 12 spies 40 years ago said that this is a mission, mission impossible. In a world of empires, nations, fortified cities, the Israelites uh, been, uh, have been a, a bunch of people, right? Untutored, defenseless, unproven, uh, a, a one more horde of many people, many tribes which swept Asia in Africa in the ancient times. Um, except their religious practices and their legal and uh, justice system. Uh, they were not different to the Jubicides, Perizzites, Midianites, Moabites and the other powers that populated at that time the Middle East. Yet in this week Parsha, Moshe communicated an unshakable belief, certainty, that what has happened to them would eventually change and inspire the whole world. Listen to Moishe's language. And I quote, Ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created human beings on earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by miracles, signs and wonders, 
by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm? Or by a great and awesome deeds, like all the things that Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes and later on in the desert? Moses was convinced that Jewish history was and would remain unique. In an age of empires, a small defenseless group had been liberated from a greatest empire, from a greatest power, but not by their own force, but by God himself. That was Moses' first point, that the singularity of Jewish history guided by God. The second point was uniqueness of this revelation. And I quote again, Deuteronomy. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as to this body of laws I am setting before you today? It's in this parsha. Other nations had gods to whom they prayed and offered sacrifices. They too attributed their military successes to their deities. But no other nation saw God as their king, as their sovereign, as their legislator, as their lawgiver. Elsewhere law represented the decrees of the kings, normal physical kings. Or in the more recent centuries, the will of the people democracy. In Israel, uniquely, even when there was a king, he had no legislative power. Only in Israel was God seen not just as a power, but as the architect of the society, the orchestrator of the music, justice and mercy, liberty and dignity of the whole society. The question is why? Toward the end of the chapter, Moses gives one answer. Because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them. God loved Abraham. Not least because Abraham loved God. Sure. And God loved Abraham's children. Because they were his children. And he had promised the patriarch that he would bless and protect them. Right through the centuries. Earlier, though, Moses give, has given a different kind of answer. Not incompatible with this second, but it's a different answer. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me. Observe them carefully. For this is your wisdom and understanding in the eyes of the nations, who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You will ask, why did Moses or God care whether or not other nations saw Israel's laws as a wise and understanding? Judaism was, was and is a love story between God and a particular group of people, often troublesome, often sometimes, sometimes serene and sometimes frequently joyous, but close and intimate, even inward looking. What has the rest of the world to do with it? But the rest of the world does have something to do with it. Judaism was never meant for Jews alone, not for Jews only. God is the God of all humanity. In Genesis, he spoke to Adam, Eve, Cain, Noah, and made a covenant with all of them, with all of a humankind, before he made one covenant with Abraham. In Egypt, whether it was in Potiphar's house, or the prison, or in the Pharaoh's palace, Joseph spoke all the time about the fact that Whatever his achievements are, are not his achievements. It's Hashem who is doing the work for him. It's Hashem who is helping him. And perhaps the most astonishing uh, 
astonishing thing was that he he was just a, an agent of God. Later in the days of Moses, God said that he would perform signs and wonders so that the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. This is in Exodus. He called Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nations. He sent Jonah to the Assyrians and Ninevians. He had Amos delivered oracles to the other nations before. He sent him to an oracle about Israel. The Isaiah, in his message, that a time will come when God will bless Israel's enemies. The Lord Almighty will bless them, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork, and Israel, my inheritance. God is concerned with all humanity. Therefore, what we do as Jews makes a difference to humanity. Not just as a mystical sense, but as an example of what it means to love and to be loved by God. Other nations would look at Jews and sense that some larger power was at work in their history. And that's true. The number of Jews in the world is smaller than the uh, calculating error, statistical error in calculation of a Chinese census, 0.2%. Yet we remain bigger than our numbers. And whenever um, there are some big news seems to take place, there are somehow, as Jews always mention, the positive or the negative way. And everything is happening more often than not around us and because of us and to us. We were, not called, we were not called by Hashem to convert the rest of the world to Judaism. We were called to inspire the world. Our job is to be God's ambassadors to the world, giving testimony to the way we live, that it is possible for small people to survive and thrive under the most adverse conditions. To construct a society of law governed by liberty, which bears collective responsibility, and to set a just society, which is guided by love, mercy, humanity, mutual understanding. And Bayat Hanan is the mission statement, mission statement of the Jewish people. We are not just an ethnic minority. We are the people who predicated freedom on teaching our children to love and not to hate. Ours is the faith that consecrated marriage and the family. And ours is the faith which spoke of responsibilities long before it spoke about any rights. Responsibility to drive for allevi alleviation of poverty, again for us, is a religious responsibility. It's a religious task. Because as Maimonides said, the following, you cannot think exalted spiritual thoughts if you are starving or sick or homeless and alone. We do these things not because we are conservative or liberal or labor or dem Democrats or Republicans, but because we believe that is what God wants us to do. This is the answer to the question, why? Moses, in the last months of his life, taught the why. In the Vayat Hanan, he gave us Jews our mission statement, the Jewish people to be the light to the nations. Rabbi Sachs says the following, speaking personally, I believe that the world in its current state of turbulence needs the Jewish message, which is that God calls on us to be true to our faith and a blessing to the others regardless of their faith. Imagine a world in which everyone believed this. It would be truly a wonderful world. This is why this is the answer to the question why. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next parsha. Goodbye.